My name is Ed Hughes. I'm here with um, maybe two or three hats on. Um, one is that I'm very proud of the fact that um, we're co-curating this event uh, with the ACCA, that is to say the Department of Music is involved in uh, co-curating the Stockhausen Festival and uh, it's a real thrill to be part of that uh, exciting uh, process. And we have got a number of other events coming up on Tuesday and Wednesday which uh, involve the department. And uh, I particularly want to uh, uh, emphasize the Wednesday evening concert when we have our own students performing here on stage. It should be a very exciting event. So uh, tonight we are thrilled to uh, have a performance of one of Stockhausen's most significant pieces. It's called Mantra. It was written in 1970 and it's for two pianos. It's for two pianos. It's actually really for three three people. So I'm really pleased that on the stage here we have tonight's artists. Um, so we have Alex Wilson, pianist, Joseph Houston, pianist, and Tom Mudd, who is a composer. And uh, how would you describe your role tonight? Technician, pretty much. A creative technician. <laughs> so I'm sure there's, there, there's a lot to it, as we hope to explore in tonight's um, uh, question and answer before uh, the concert gets going. So, um, can we start just about, just about thinking about the context for the, uh, the conception of this piece? So Stockhausen lived from 1928 to 2007, so he's, um, it's not so long since he, he died. Um, and in 1970, I think, he had the idea for this piece. Alex, can you just um, maybe remind us some of the uh, details of that, um, the context for this piece? Yes, of course. So, no, no. <coughs> 1970, so he'd uh, just come out of a period of uh, more improvisatory uh, music that was sort of off score, and this was a return, sort of represents a return to notation once again. Uh, and he speaks of doing most of the composition for it at the World Fair in Osaka, Japan. Uh, and so he says that he'd spend sort of the mornings sort of pl plan planning the form and the structure of the piece out, and then spend sort of the rest the rest of the day playing his own music for hours and hours with. Uh, the, the performers at the, at the World Fair for thousands and thousands of audience members. So he was obviously surrounded, uh, surrounded by the rest of his music. So I'm sure there's plenty, plenty of influence on, on his thinking for this, for this piece. Uh, so, so yes, he was writing it through, through the year and it was, it was a commission by the Bavarian radio. Um, and it was performed by the Kontarsky brothers, sort of a very famous uh, piano duo from, the, from, from that time, performed, performed by them at the uh, Donaushingen Festival of Contemporary Contemporary Music, uh, sort of towards the end of 1970. Great. So, could you say a little bit more about what mantra actually means, and also the kind of like the structure or the shape <coughs> or the form of the music of course, and how yeah. it works? Yeah. Well, so the mantra of the title is it's a thirteen a, a series of thirteen notes uh, that you don't actually hear in its sort of simplest form until the very very end of the piece. Uh, but the uh, so it's, it's the 13 notes sort of separated into four four segments, uh, and so the piece forms into 13 large cycles, uh, and each cycle is centred around one of the pitches. And then the, so the first one is the first the first pitch, then moves on to the next side, cycle, and so then that, that's the sec the second pitch is the centre. And so throughout throughout the work, you hear sort of rep rep repetitions of the of the of the notes as they travel through through the mantra. And every, every single note of the of, of, of the seventy minutes of the piece is repetitions of the mantra, and it's uh, sort of it, it's expanded and transposed through the thirteen different keys, if you like. But it's not a it's not a theme and variations as such, because the mantra never never actually changes. It's not inversed or anything like that. It's there's just repetitions of the mantra over and over again, and then and then, and then towards the end, there's a very fast section where well, we're just sort of con constantly going very very quickly and that's actually the whole the whole piece in in miniature it's sort of play the, all, all, all 13 cycles that got uh, go through go through sort of very quickly in a five, sort of a five minute burst of activity brilliant so listening to some of the rehearsal this afternoon i was really excited by the um I don't know, it kind of had a sort of a unif very novel sound world, but also quite a unified 
feel to it, sound world, and also quite a theatrical sound world. Is that a fair description of it? The fact that it's like reaching towards very interesting textures which create theatre, perhaps? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the, the fact that it's kind of an expansion of the traditional two piano piece and that we have the electronics kind of modifying the sound and each of us has a set of crotales and wood blocks um, and I also have shortwave radio sounds to control as well and there's also, well, a brief moment of um, where we're using our voices um, so this kind of expansion of, of traditional sounds I think does sort of lead to a kind of more theatrical feel and um, yeah, I think that's a does it, um, in the program, one of the program notes I've read, it, I think it's actually described as a duel between two pianists. Is that a fair representation or slightly off the rails? Um, there's definitely a moment in, in the piece, which I'm sure you'll, you'll pick up on, where, yeah. where it definitely is a duel. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I suppose there are a few kind of little other, mo other smaller moments where, it, where it's kind of a bit of a contest and a bit of a fight. But... I think there's quite a lot of moments where we come together and work as one as well, so I wouldn't say it's always like that. So this piece, it's one of the formidable kind of iconic classics maybe of late 20th century Western contemporary music, maybe you could say that, yeah. but at the same time it feels like from the way you're describing it, it's, it's, some, it's, it's a piece which has definite opportunities for the listener to sort of navigate their way through as it were. It's, a clear, I think so, you feel yeah. it's got a clear and quite legible yeah. structure to it. I mean, you have this, as Alex said, you have this, this mantra that's unvaried the whole time. Um, and that's also imposed onto the kind of larger scale structure, as well as everything in the piece being made up of these, this order of notes. So, so you kind of got this feeling of it being there in the very close detail of the piece, and in the kind of middle ground of the piece, and in the background of the piece at the same time. So it has a very yeah, it's all very kind of unified and, and ordered yeah. um, sort of feel to it. And you definitely, I mean, you just hear this stuff over and over again and you have to slightly, um, yeah, n not the, the note order is always the same, but sometimes the rhythm is the thing that's often mm -hmm. distorted. Um, so, yeah, I think there's, there's quite a lot to hang on to, I think, as a listener. It's, yeah. So, um, I think one of the things that we... Uh, perhaps learn from this piece is the sense of transformation and you've mentioned the instruments that in addition to the piano uh, causing transformations, you know, the shortwave radio and the other instruments that are involved. A key part of it of course is the uh, use of live electronics which was really groundbreaking. Um, so we're talking about 1970, but what were the, um, Tom if I can turn to you just very broadly, what was the point of the uh, electronics and in the first place and for Stockhausen and how what you know how did they work? The point I'm probably not qualified to talk about, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but it blends very much with the kind of rest of the composition that that set of tones is built into the electronics as well. Mm. Um, through the ring modulator. So you feed in the sound of the piano into this box that was built specially for this piece and modulate the volume of the piano sounds with these tones. So each of the tones in the the 13 set is used to interfere with the sound of the piano, creating these sort of uh, side bands from the combinations of these tones and sort of adding a lot of extra tones into the spectrum. So, um, so what, because when, I mean, so we have, Alex and I each have iPads where we're controlling that and, and, we're, and as you say, it kind of is built around specific pitches. But say at the beginning we have, we have it set to an A, that means when we play an A, there's not much interference from the mm. electronics with the piano sound, but when we get further and further away from that A up to, like, say, a tritone, then you have a much wider interference yeah. and you hear the ring modulation yeah. much more clearly. Particularly because all the different partials have their yeah. own side bands, so you yeah. have a very bell like sort of spectrum at the end because of all the harmonic uh, side bands from the ring modulation. Yeah. yeah. And so, so the mantra that we talked about earlier is also yeah, set into the ring modulation because we, uh, the order of pitches that we change the ring modulation to is the same as the mantra. So in the first section, everything feels centered around an A because the A is the only uninterfered with note. And then in the second one, 
F sharp or whatever it is. But yeah. yeah. So you get definite um, consonants and a definite exactly, yeah. the definite consonants. Exactly. Yeah. So that mind. is another layer to add to this kind of mesh of yeah. mantras. Sorry, I no, 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 that's great. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, it is really there's a kind of a sense of a trio at work here. You're all engaging with the electronics and mm. you're you know it's quite a critical trio in terms of the transformation of the sound. Yeah. Not only are we altering. Yeah. Just which pitches are affected by the ring modulation. Tom's also changing the strength yeah. and kind of the yeah. levels of everything yeah. as we go constantly. Yeah. 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 So again, very broadly, this, was, this is an adaptation of Stockhausen's original equipment, isn't it? Could you just, just briefly say something about that? Yeah, yes. it, this digital implementation, I should definitely say that it was not made by me, it was made by Benjamin Cross Ravi, who did all the hard work and I just sort of waltzed in and the performances. <laughs> But you, you did this originally with him, um, and he's, he's just very much implemented these as literally as possible in the software, yeah. um, with the same sort of setup with the compression as well as the ring modulators, yeah. and the potential for EQing. Um, but now obviously you have the iPad control as well, so yeah. it's, it's you get to step very clearly at points in the score through these yeah. times and manipulate them. Yeah. Yeah. And it says it's a max patch, isn't it, that he's made? That yeah. 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 I mean, it could be. You know, there's nothing unique for Max in that. Yeah. Yeah, it's influenced. So, a, a, a new instrument, in a sense, has been devised for this piece for performance today. Is that fair? It's been really say, yeah. Really, yeah. Really, yeah. 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 Fair enough. Um, great. Um, I'm going to give the audience a chance to ask a question in a second. I'll just ask one more question myself, which is, I mean, you know, take it or leave it in turn. I'm just wondering basically about Stockhausen, because one theme of the festival, which is um, co-curated with uh, Laura McDermott at the ACA um, and ourselves over in the School of Media, Film and Music, um, curious, you know, idea is that you've got lots of students who are interested in Stockhausen's work. For you personally, does it have, does Stockhausen's sort of legacy resonate for you as performers and composers? Uh, yes, 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 certainly. I think about, about, about to hear that the, the sound world is uh, such a distinctive, distinctive mix of the sort of piano with the guitars and the, and the ring modulation as well. Uh, and it's something you don't, you don't, you don't really hear nowadays that, that that sort of sound is very of its time at the same time. Um, it's almost like kitsch, isn't it? it yeah, 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 um, yeah. It's the sort of seven, 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 70s elect, electronic sound. You can sound see him wearing his flair as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that, that's right, yeah. Yeah, but it's a, such a... Yeah, because it's such, 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 an expanse, it's such, such an expanse of sound, such a, such a, a big piece created from such a small, small, small place. But so, so, it's, so, so, it's so interesting to be able to use use this 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 small uh, series series of notes and just see how they're sort of every, 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 everywhere through 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 the piece there in their influence, and then sort of every, every time you approach it, you see somewhere else, some somewhere else that the mantra has influenced the. So it's a really interesting learning experience as a, as a performer, performing, performing the piece, just hearing it afresh each time, I mm. suppose. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely for me. I mean, we, we were talking on the way here that there's just, well, as, as, uh, as Alex said, there's kind of nothing really else that sounds quite like it, you know? Um, and I think that's true of a lot of Stockhausen's work. It's really very distinctively him, um, whatever that means. Um, so I think, yeah, and I mean, we were also just saying how kind of inventive he was, you know, almost outside the bounds of just a normal composer should be, but, you know, getting us to use all these extra instruments, you know, changing the pianos to the ring modulation, um, you know, it's all kind of expanding <laughs> and exploring different ways of doing things um, in a, a, a way that I think is really important. That's um, nice. And, and obviously, there's a huge legacy from that, you know, in, in the things that we, we do today. Yeah, spirit of inquiry. Yeah. Venture, perhaps, broadly speaking. I mean, you hear that said about composers all the time, but I think this is a different situation because it's actually, he, he's not just being inventive within the musical form or the structure, but, but he's actually 
changing the whole setup, you know, yeah. two pianos, electronics, extra instruments, voices, um, which I think there wasn't so much of yeah. going on at the time. So. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Tom, you got any thoughts? Uh, I don't have any kind of easy answers to that. Um, I mean, he's such a sort of pole that some people flock to and some people flock away from. <laughs> and he's not someone I spend a huge amount of time thinking about myself, but he's got such a broad body of different things and there's, there's riches there if you kind of dig in it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but, but it's not sort of a, a model that I particularly find myself drawn to. But yeah, that's not if you could know as well. But <laughs> 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 no, well that's fair enough. That's good, it's, it's balanced. balanced. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, can I turn to the audience? If you do you have any any questions that you'd like to ask um, our distinguished artists here on the stage? Yes, Evelyn. I'm just curious about um, the coordination of the actual playing during the piece. You're quite far away from each other, mm -hmm. the two pianists. Do you need eye contact or anything? Or we do. Yeah, that's one of the real difficulties when, when playing it. I mean. Um, You'll see that we've got these kind of A3 scores, but, but they're loose leaf, so we can kind of make a hole so that we can see <laughs> each other yeah, through the middle. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's definitely something that takes some getting used to. Yeah, yeah it's pretty crucial um, though, isn't it? So, yeah. yeah. Um, and well, you'll see there's quite a lot of head nodding going on. <laughs> um, but it, the reason for that is so that the electronics don't leak, because each piano is, has its own separate kind of ring modulation. So. Uh, he actually asks you to put them as far apart. Yeah. Interesting. And are there problem. stopwatches involved, or is it all notated in meters? No, it's all notated, yeah. Um, so you can vary the speed. Obviously, the electronics, it's just changing things live, so you can go as fast or slow as you want. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I've got a question about the, um, the nature of the electronic sound, because I understand that the um, the technology that's being used to produce that part of it this evening is quite quite different from what was used in the early performances and I'm wondering what difference that makes to the the nature of the sound as we'll be hearing it like how it's how it might be spaced out and, and, and the sort of um, the tone and quality of the timbre of it and so forth yeah, I mean, that's a tough one. I mean, I haven't heard the original box that was designed and used for the original piece, so I can't quite exactly say how it would differ. Um, but, you know, we, we, we're modulating the sounds with a, a, a digital sign tone, which might not have the kind of, um, you know, it might be a very different thing done in the analog circuitry of the box. And the compression is likely to be quite different as well. So the signal prior to being ring modulated is compressed. So, which you can kind of hear when the dynamics change, you know, mm -hmm. if you suddenly go very quiet, the electronics don't dip quite as far unless I push them there. Mm -hmm. um, and so the behavior of that compressor, I think I have done a lot of work to, to make it That's sort of, nice. yeah, not necessarily authentic, but it, to behave in a similar way. Um, but yeah, if you've got an ear for it, you'd, you'd probably be able to pick out differences, I would think. <laughs> Thank you. But sadly, people are doing a lot of, um, um, you, know, you know, using iPads and, and Macs MSP to do, it's kind of a common thing that you see nowadays and they're, all, they're also the first few recordings made that way out now as well. So, right, okay. Yeah, so I think it's kind of spreading out in a way naturally. It's been so much more accessible to do it as well. Exactly. It's yeah. so difficult yeah. to do that well. Uh, yeah. It's very exciting to hear it live, is what I want to say, I think, <laughs> even, even if it's a bit inauthentic. Perhaps. Anyway, um, Patrick, you've got a... No, it's really a follow-up to yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And more to do with performance and the sound. Mm. Um, but now, now we've got the 21st century technology, does that make you know, your role to, uh, as a technician easier? Because I, mean, I can remember um, back in the 60s and 70s when I was doing this sort of thing, um, and indeed performing software from PC. Um, you know, the amount of gear we have had was right. huge, and things could always go wrong. And in a sense, there was a tension there all the time um, because you know, never quite knew if it's actually going to work. But I suspect it may have been more reliable. But does that, in a way, detract from the idea of a trio? You've got the two pianists who are having this duel, yeah. and the, the, the technician 
is actually merely yeah, yeah, it could be that if it pushed into more of like a sort of, of that, yeah. activity. Could be, yeah. I mean, there's definitely still a million things that can go wrong. <laughs> 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 uh, and different things like digital crashes. We've got a digital desk, which I'm struggling to navigate. <laughs> um, there's lots of other sort of problems. But yeah, possibly it's, it's a different role from what it was. Yeah. Great. I guess we should stop quite shortly. I just want to take one more minute, if I may to say that the first piece in the programme is Tombeau de Messiaen by Jonathan Harvey and of course Sussex is proud of the fact that Harvey was a uh, professor of uh, composition here in the 1980s and 90s. Um, so it's a short piece um, and it's about, is it about 10 minutes? Uh, yeah, maybe perhaps shorter. Perhaps yeah. shorter, nine, or nine minutes or so. And uh, then there'll be a short pause to re reset, so only a matter of a few minutes I think, just to reset for the mantra piece, so don't go away. And mantra is 80 minutes, it's an amazing experience. Um, but I just wanted to, Joe, do, could you briefly introduce the, just say a few words perhaps about Jonathan's piece? Yeah, well jo Jonathan's piece is slightly different, it's, it's a kind of more straightforward setup of piano and tape basically, um, except again obviously it's kind of digital setup here. But um, so it's just a matter of pressing play and I'm playing along to this fixed track. So obviously tempo wise it's a bit a bit more rigid. Um, although there's quite a lot of room for movement and he's kind of set up a queuing system quite cleverly so that you can navigate your way through. Um, I was actually playing it earlier with the piano being remodulated and it kind of sounds like a piece. <laughs> <laughs> Because um, the, the effect of the electronics is to certainly feel like the piano is being detuned or kind of slightly um, messed with in some way, so it just sounds a little bit strange, almost prepared sometimes, you know, that kind of sound. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I think it's a really a lovely little piece and, and works very, very well um, in terms of that relationship between the piano and the electronics. So great. I've done it a few times. So yeah, yeah to great. Include that. Okay, well, I just want to say thanks ever so much to the three of you for joining us on stage very generously before what promises to be a very exciting programme. So thanks everybody for coming and please thank our artists. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you.